Hi, we're going to talk about converting continuous data to categorical data using some Python code. And we're going to look at a few different ways to do this from binning to clustering uh, with some very easy code that you can apply in Power BI using your Python uh, scripting in the Power Query Editor. So you can see from these tree maps that we have a few different methods of, of making that continuous data categorical. And I've used a clustering here. And, and you can see that there's three clusters there. I've used some bins. And then we're going to talk about setting bins. And, and you can see now I have five bins here with the bin width in this section here. And then we also have bins with labels. And then we have equal uh, splits of our data. And you can see that all numbered here. Now, there's a lot of advantages of this. For example, if I created a relationship, and we'll come back to this in a minute, we can apply those bins over our data. And the same with doing some analysis. So we'll come back to this in a few minutes after we go through our data. So let's review the data set. So I'm going to go over to the top and go to transform data. And you can see that we have a data set here and two tables. And one is just a copy of the previous table. So that's why you see the two. So the data set that we're looking at is a car data set. So we have, we have the name of the cars to the far right. And then we have all these different variables or information regarding those cars. So the miles per gallon, cylinders, displacement, horsepower, weight, acceleration, the model year. And then we have another dimension on top of that, which is the origin. So how did I get this data? This data is also a Python data set. So I'm going to navigate up to source and double click the gear icon. And you can see what I've done is two lines of code. I've imported Seaborn and saved it as a variable SNS. Then I've used that variable SNS, used the function load underscore data set to bring in the MPG data set and then I just saved it as a data set then I made a duplicate of that and now we can look at how we can categorize some of that continuous data so you can see there are a few steps on the right if I go to the one that says run a Python script you can see what I've done is brought in some code, very simple code. So we created bins. First, we imported our pandas data set. And then I have this um, docu string that says create bins. I created a new column by using this bracket notation and using that pandas variable so we imported pandas as pd and i use a very simple function called pd dot cut and what this allows us to do is create bins of your data so i can set the number of bins that i want so i put five bins here and that's why when we go over to our visual we have five bins and we'll go through that in one second we can use the same function here, and I'm running this over the weight of the car. So we're going to have five bins with the weight distributions. Then I use the same function and then say, give me three bins. However, I can pass labels on top of those bins. So here are the three bins, and they go from highest to lowest in terms of the binning. And I just named them heavy, medium, and light. And we'll be able to see how that um, is structured once we look at the visuals. Then I wanted equal splits of our data. So for equal splits, I still use the PD variable, which represents pandas. And I use QCut. 
So that is able to cut our data by default into quarters. So you would be four, but I said, give me 10. So you can change this to anything you want. And we can also alter the bins um, to whatever we want. And lastly, I can show you one more type of turning that continuous data into categorical data. We can use a clustering algorithm. So I use the k-means algorithm. So from sklearn.cluster, I imported k-means. Then I use the k-means function and say, give me three clusters. You can change the clusters to four clusters or five clusters, it's up to you. There is a method for ideal clusters, but it kind of goes outside of this tutorial. So I wanted to cluster the weight of the car. So I created a cluster with the fit and predict function and fit and predicted that over our weight column. And then I just added the cluster column by using that bracket notation. And then I used plus one because I didn't like cluster zero, one, and two. So if I pressed plus one, I get cluster one, two, and three. It just looks a little bit better that way. So let's pop back over to our visuals and let's go to our introduction page. And we can see that I have three clusters here and that passed in those three clusters that we saw in our uh, k-means algorithm. For our bins, I created five bins and we can see the widths of those bins here. And then we have our labels, heavy, medium, and light. And then we have our 10 equal splits that we had in our code. So what I did is I said, okay, we have all these different columns that we were able to use for weight to cut that weight up into our categorical features. Then if I did something like looked at the relationship between acceleration and horsepower, I could then apply the bin over the legend so we could kind of see the different groups in the scatter plots. So we can see acceleration and horsepower it definitely has kind of a linear relationship as the acceleration increases. Um, we can see the, the average acceleration here and the horsepower here. And we can see how everything is kind of set up. So we can see where the heavy cars are down in this area, the medium cars are in this area, and then the light cars are in this area. For our cluster, you can see it gets uh, kind of similar where the heavy cars are at the bottom, but for our equal splits, you can see that it's all over the place. So that probably gives us a little less analysis power, but you can see how we can definitely use these dimensions over our visuals just by going over to our scatter plot and adding the the particular dimension that we created into the legend. And for analysis, what we can do is we can take each one of those new dimensions that we created, those um, categoricals that we created from my continuous data and look at the average metrics across those. So for example, labels, we have a heavy, light, and medium, and we can see the averages of the horsepower, acceleration, miles per gallon for all of those and kind of see the difference. So you can see from our cluster and our label, it's uh, some differences there from the different clusters because they're not clustered in the same way because this is bins and this is a algorithm. And then for our equal splits, you can see how our averages pan out. So you can see there's a lot of analysis potential we have when we are using some of these methods of cutting our data 
from continuous to categorical. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Thank you. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.